begging for a team mate to get on the end of it. And what a great finish it is. Perfect body into it. He strikes so well. What an excellent finish. Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel, my name's Alad, the set play gaming, this is the FIFA 23 West Brom career mode, it is the road to glory, with AD Boothroyd, season 5, episode 110, and we are into January 2027, some news here regarding the brand objective, we have passed the brand objective quite easily, with a couple of months left to go, and we've gained 21.5 million in shirt sales, and that is obviously something to be celebrated as we look to our new budget for next season. Coming up in today's episode, we face Everton at home in the league. And then a quick trip as we take on Reading in the FA Cup on Saturday. And we finish today's episode before the January transfer window with an away game at Brentford. Let's crack on with it and see how we get on with today's results. We are starting today's episode with a game at home at the Hawthorns taking on Everton and they're going well this season they're in mid-table so we're gonna have to be on our game we've changed up the formation as you can see it's 4-1-4-1 today Hayden's gonna hold the midfield and then you've got Neil and O'Reilly through the middle with Shortire and Rashidza on the wings and you can see O'Shea partners McCrory at the back this is Everton's lineup they're going with a 4-5-1 so Plenty of midfield battles going to be going on today. You can see there, five as well, with Ellis Sims up top on his own. Hopefully we should have enough to be able to contain him. An attempted back heel doesn't go the way that Curler would have hoped. And then short tyre here, opening five, six minutes. Comes to O'Reilly, sidesteps the marker and then takes a dinger. Into the top corner, an absolutely brilliant strike from Matt O'Reilly. You'll see here from the replay. Look at this. It's such good technique. It's a wonderful strike from that range. This is probably the better one. Hits through the ball, just inside the post, right in the top corner, potent stamp finish. And what a start that is. And O'Reilly's due a goal. And uh Everton come forward, Sims trying to get into the box and uh, spin his marker, but O'Shea comes across, showing some great defensive work there from the captain. Desperate to pick up some points as we slide towards the relegation zone, we don't want to get caught into that mix. Everton looking for a way back in with an equaliser in this first half. And this guy, Javier Poado, is a threat. He's got six goals this season. Back to Svanberg. Into Sims. On the turn, looking for the bottom corner. And another good save. And then after half an hour, win the ball back. Batshuayi tries to turn. It's intercepted. Michaelenko gives it away. Rashidza into Neil. Into Batshuayi, he lays it off, and it's Neil. We've seen his troubles in front of goal this year. He's had chances running into the box, and uh, originally we planned for Neil to be like a box-to-box -box kind of guy, as well as capable of playing defensive. But it's just not transitioned. He's not been able to finish chances that he's been in. Good interception there by McCrory. And so we would go in at the break. It is 1-0 at half-time, hoping to try and get ourselves an extra insurance goal here as we're looking for three points at home. And then with 20 minutes to go, Sims tries to play a throw ball. O'Shea with the interception, and I don't know what he was doing there with that pass. Gives it away. There's no danger right now, but then suddenly Barco cuts inside. Suddenly there is danger, and a great block by Seth Vandenberg as he comes across and makes the interception. And then from the corner, Everton work a short corner. Evander with a attempted cross. Sinkgraven comes across, makes the interception, and he tries to play a quick pass out, and is brought down by Evander, who ends up going in the referee's book. And then Barco takes on O'Shea, beats him for pace, 
gets by McCrory into Sims and then across the comes Seth Vandenberg. How many times have we said that this year? 75 minutes in. Garen Kowal turns Aja gets away from Tavares. He's going to completely sidestep him here. There he goes. And then Kowal tries to get the cross in. But Barnell gets back and makes an interception. 82 minutes in now. It's still only 1-0. And you pay the price here for not getting a second goal. Into Sims. Looks to the top corner and a great save. Bailey Peacock Farrell with the save. Wasn't in the corner enough. Five minutes left. And Everton would finally get themselves the goal they needed. Partey plays it through and Evander finds the top corner. Goalkeeper not able to get a hand on that one. Considering how well we'd defended, it was disappointed to concede late on. Don't know why my fullback stopped running there. So, we take a point from this. At least it's not a defeat and we crack on with the FA Cup. So here we go, the FA Cup and Reading are our opponents. I don't anticipate Reading being much of a problem here in round four as we're at the Medeski Stadium. This is their lineup, and they've gone with Southwood in goal. You can see Ekpateta, Dorset and Holmes with Guinness Walker and Abrefer as the fullbacks. Tetek, Suzlov, Serrano, and then they have Valchmit and Osmajic up front. Again, like I said, I don't anticipate them being a problem. Uh, but if we perform like we did against Everton and we don't manage to take our chances, then we could end up getting knocked out here. We have to be ruthless here. We have to put in a good performance. We've got a very strong side. We're going again with a 4-1-4-1. McCrory's been pushed into midfield and Hayden's dropping into centre-back alongside Seth Vandenberg. Let's see how we get on. Serrano. The opening 12 minutes, Serrano into Osmajic, looking for a braver on the overlap. And across comes Vandenberg. Great interception. It'd be nice if we could sign this guy, but I'm just not sure whether Liverpool would be ready to let him go just yet. And then 25 minutes in, Iannaccio turns Dorset, then gets past him again. And he should be scoring from there, shouldn't he? This is what I was talking about with the Everton game, where we squandered chances, didn't take our chances, and it ends up coming back to cost us in the end this one here this is a really good highlight just before the half hour Grady Diangana with a lovely cross and then look at this it's a scorpion kick and a great save by Southwood as we continue to pile on the pressure on the home side McCrory wins the ball back Ayanacho spins his man it's on his unfavoured right foot goes for the bottom corner and Southwood pushes it wide this was just literally a minute or two after the um, save from that scorpion kick attempt Ayanacho on the juice and Diagana's cross in and how about that for a header Southwood didn't even move this time Ayanacho getting ahead of his marker and then the header it's rare on this game I, I do score a lot of headers but it's rare that I score a header that's that cleanly hit look at this didn't give the goalkeeper a chance to save it and then a few moments before half time Serrano gets by Sharp it comes across Suslov to Valchmit and then I think it, it is Valchmit with the attempt what a chance to equalise that was. We go in at the break with just the one goal. Again, I'm sure AD Boudreau will be telling the players, remember what happened in the last game against Everton, make sure that that doesn't happen today. We want to get through to the next round. 50 minutes in. Diangana spins a braver, has him in uh, sorted all day, and then look at this. Grant, bottom corner. Here we see with Grady Diangana's skill, his dribbling, his ball control, and then didn't panic here when he comes up against his man, just drops the shoulder, goes past him, and picks out Grant in the box, who finds the bottom corner. This is as much about Grant's finish and composure as it is about Grady Diangana's technical ability and able to get past his marker. 
And then they're looking for a brave for on the swing again. Going to come back. Serrano into Osmaic. And Osmaic is going to pull this back to Serrano. Into Osmaic. Into Tetek. And it's actually a save by Griffiths. And Sigraven back to Tymon. And then into Sigraven. He's going to look for Garan Kowal down the left. Cuts inside. Goes back outside on Dorset. Gets the cross in. And look at this. Dan Neal. What a header. We've seen two brilliant headers here. One from Ayanacho. And then look at Dan Neal. Look at the run. Look at how much space he's got. And it's a really good header. Bullet header. Pass Southwood. 75 minutes in. Sink Graven looking for Kowal again. And here comes Kowal against the Brafer. He's got no chance. Imagine marking Grady D and Garner all match and then having to go up against Garen Kowal. Lacking the finish there. We win this one comfortably 3-0. We're through to the next round. Let's take on Brentford. So Brentford away is our final match before the close of the January transfer window. It's been a quiet one, mostly because we did spend up a lot of our money in the summer. No real need to make unnecessary signings. This is Brentford's lineup. They're going with an ambitious 4-3-3. And you see a couple of familiar names there. Vitaly Janel. And then they've got Palistri, Lewelling and Jeremy Boga. Lewelling actually has 10 or 11 goals this year. So we have to keep an eye on him. Here's our lineup. Griffiths retains his place in goal. We're sticking with the 4 1 4 1. We've got a draw and a win today. And you see Rashidza, Neil O'Reilly, and Dean Garner as the midfield with Batchwai up top. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're looking good right now. Hopefully, we can get some more points today in this Premier League game. Pelistri looking to cut inside it's won by St. Grav and then given away and Pelistri spurns the opportunity maybe he has to be going with the outside of the foot there and aiming for the far post Fuchs loses out here to Ivan Usek skips past his man plays in Liberling and in comes Sepp Vandenberg I really really do want to sign him you know and Fuchs into O'Reilly, wide to Diangana, into Batshuayi, Chester down, and it's a half volley into the bottom corner. Something against the run of play, I would say. I say that Brentford had the possession, had the chances in the opening 15 to 20 minutes, but this one here. He just has enough time to bring the ball down and uh, um, once he chests it here it just comes down and you can see Sugawara's behind him he's going to try and close him down but he just doesn't have enough time and Batshuayi scores to give us a 1-0 lead. The referee after half hour says that Vandenberg fouled this man and then from this you can see Ivan Usek back heels it and Lewelling shot to the top corner. I didn't think that was a free kick, to be honest. Batshuayi into O'Reilly. Back to Batshuayi. He's about to pull the trigger again. It's a great block by Tete. And they managed to get the ball clear. We go in at the break. 1-0. All three games we've been in this position. Can we hold out and maybe hit them on the counter? 53 minutes in, Ivan Usek into Liverling. In comes Vandenberg, great interception. And then Fuchs mops up. 61 minutes in, Janel is Baptiste into Liverling. He's going to probably look for the pass into Ivan Usek. And a great block by Sepp Vandenberg. Sig Graven manages to get it away. We are now a few moments later. Lewelling looking for a run. Keen Lewis Potter holds his man off. Visser skips past his marker. Goes for a low shot. And it's a good save by Griffiths. 75 minutes in. Garen Kowal down the left. This is our chance to get that insurance goal. Garen Kowal 
skips past his man, but it's intercepted. And he managed to get the ball clear. Missed the opportunity for the insurance goal, and here come Brentford. Boga cuts inside his marker, goes back outside, cuts back inside again. Lewilling, even Usek, and Keen Lewis Potter fires it into the corner to equalise 77 minutes. It's 1-1. One, one. And once again, the full-backs are too far away from the wingers. It's something that we need to look at because we're conceding a lot of goals where they have that one-man extra and then the full-backs tucking in too far. I don't know whether it's because they're being sucked onto the ball. I'm not sure. And then two minutes later, Brentford had the ball in the net again. Even Usek, Lois Potter, skips past... O'Shea, back to Lewis Potter, back to Johan Wisser, and he hits that on the volley past Griffiths. Just look at the quality of the cross. It's inch perfect, and he makes the finish look so easy. What a good and suddenly, in a spell of just two or three minutes, Brentford have turned this game on its head. When we're pushing forward, Kual loses out. We're trying to get an equaliser. It's on 89 minutes. We win the ball there with Seth Vandenberg, but they get the favourable deflection. It comes through. Then Rico Henry sets up Ivanusek, and Luka Ivanusek makes no mistake. 3-1, and the game is well and truly done at this point. We always knew Brentford, with their pressing, would be a difficult game. It's just disappointing to be 1-0 up with 13 minutes left and lose 3-1. You can see A.D. Boothroyd's not happy with that. We pick up a loss here in the final game. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below. Alright, thanks for joining me on the channel today. If you'd like to continue supporting me, you can do so by subscribing or watching any of the videos from the playlist available at the end of this video. I'm going to be back in two days on Wednesday. We're going to take on Nottingham Forest and Spurs in the Premier League. And we've also been drawn against Stoke City in round five of the FA Cup. This is our lad for Set Play Gaming. See you guys soon.